Hello everyone, Pastor Lon here at Homestead and Pastor. I hope everybody's doing well today. I want to share a little bit of uh, scripture with you from the Word of God during devotion time today. Y'all bear with me. My voice is about gone. I uh, must have preached too hard this morning at, at our regular church service, and I didn't get to get it recorded. I apologize for that, but I'm going to try to get back recording some of my sermons at the church, so y'all just bear with me. But uh, pray for me today. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, and whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. I want you to think about something today about being blinded by the God of this world. That's what I titled this little devotion today. It was actually part of my sermon or really the main part of my sermon, but I'm going to just give you a, um, a little bit of what I preached this morning to our church family at Flat Creek. But um, blinded by the God of this world. You know, as I read this scripture, and if we hide this gospel, don't share the gospel, it's hid to those that are lost. And they need to hear it. They need to see it in everything we do. It talks about if you light a candle, you don't put it under a bushel. You you, you put it up on a candlestick. And you, you 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 hold it up high. Not that we would be seen, but that but that God's glory would be seen in us and through us and shine into this dark, dying world that we're living in today. But there is a blindness, as I'm going to talk about, that is worse than being physically blind. I got two kids, Bradley and Michaela, there. They're physically blind. Um, they can't see. Bradley can't see at all. Um, he can see a little bit of shades of light when the light's on. He went completely blind at seven years old. Michaela's completely blind in one eye and legally blind in the other eye. But they're physically blind. But spiritually speaking, I believe that their name's written down in the Lamb's Book of Life and they know who Jesus is. And that's, go, that's all that's going to matter at the end of their life. Same way with anybody else that's uh, physically blind in this world. But spiritual blindness is what the scripture talks about. It's not uh, a blindness like men of the Bible, like Brad and Michaela suffer today. It's not that kind of blindness. Matter of fact, this blindness that I'm talking about, spiritually speaking, will cost you your soul. It'll cost you, it'll cost you heaven. You'll miss out on, on heaven if you're spiritually blind walking around in this world today. And there's a lot of spiritual blind, spiritually blind people today. And it's not just the people that are out worshiping the devil, serving the devil like those that were at the Grammy Awards this past week. But it's people in churches today that are spiritually blind. It's preachers today that are spiritually blind. They're conforming to this world instead of being transformed by the renewing of their mind. They're preaching what they believe and not what thus saith the word of God. If you don't preach the Bible, you might as well sit down because whatever, if I preach in my own flesh and my own self, it's all in vain. We must preach what thus saith the word of God. But this spiritual blindness is being caused by the devil. Matter of fact, we read in the scripture, it said, as I read in your hearing in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse, verse 4, in whom the God of this world, which is Satan, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine into them. They will continue to be spiritually blind people if they don't open up their heart and mind and receive the free gift of salvation and let Jesus Christ shine the light inside of their dark, dying soul. And we're living in those times today where they're calling good evil and evil good. You see it on every hand. I'm going to share a story with you in just a moment before I wrap this up. The Lord allows me to do so. This blindness of spiritual blindness is seldom healed because men would rather believe a lie and be damned to hell eternal than to be proven wrong. And a lot of people, they got a lot of pride. We got a lot of prideful people and got a lot of preachers that has, uh, their ego is in the way of them receiving what God's given, wants to try to give them that they could share the precious gospel 
of Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world. Paul is talking about the people that he personally spoke to about Jesus Christ and him being the Christ, and they refused to accept it. We're living in a generation today and a culture today that they don't want to accept who Jesus is. That story I wanted to share with you, I'll go ahead and interject that now. Just like I mentioned earlier, you, if you, I don't watch that kind of garbage, but they had, I saw bits and pieces of it where it would be, you know, whether it was on a, something on Facebook or something on YouTube or I read about it or whatever, but it, well, even on the news, which I don't watch much of that anymore either. But everybody's heard or seen about how they were worshiping Satan on the, on the stage at the Grammy Awards the other week. And everybody seemed like that was okay. They were even gospel performers there that sat right there and didn't do anything. They should have got up and walked out. They should have rebuked Satan in the name of Jesus, but they didn't. And, uh, but the word, the culture today and the, the media and this culture we're living in, those that are blinded by Satan, they think that's okay. They also think it's okay when I seen a video the other week where there was this young boy, young man up in the Mall of America in Minnesota. He walked in there and he had a t-shirt on that said, Jesus saves. Security guard would not let that young man shop unless he took that shirt off that said, Jesus saves. Blinded by Satan, blinded by the God of this world. They can't, they call him good evil and evil good. And as a believer, if you're not careful, that'll get you down and out. But as a minister of the gospel, that gives me great hope. You say, Lon, you lost your mind. What are you trying to say? Here's what I'm trying to say. It's what I told our folks at Flat Creek today. I'm excited because when I see the evilness continue to rise, the tide of evilness continuing to rise, the, the, the people being blind, I'm not glad about this, but when I see it coming to pass, that gives me great confidence, more confidence in God's word. Not that I need it anymore, but I, I believed it from the very beginning, from Genesis to Revelation. Once I got saved and accepted the free gift of salvation, and he took the scales off of my eyes that had me blinded by Satan and, gave, and, in, and instilled in me his marvelous light and his power and his glory and his spirit, I see things a whole lot different now. I see the Bible being fulfilled when they call him good, evil, and evil, good. It's okay to worship Satan on the on the stage at the Grammy Awards for the world to see, but it's not okay for a young man to go in a mall of America, Minnesota, just because he got a t-shirt on that reads Jesus saves. That's not okay. I'm telling you, that gives me great hope knowing that the Bible's real, for one thing. Number two, that Jesus Christ is soon to return. He's even at the door. It, uh, only thing I'm waiting on, I've, I've, stopped, list, I've stopped looking at the signs, uh, so to speak, even though I still... Look at them, but I, I'm not focused on the signs today as much as I am listening for the sound of the trumpet because it can sound at any moment. We're that close home, y'all. We're that far spent in this age that we're living in today. I'm no prophet. Nobody here can tell you when that day is going to come. That Jesus doesn't even know except only God Almighty. The angels don't know. Jesus don't know according to this book. God Almighty is the only one that knows. But Jesus is sitting in the right hand of the Father waiting right now for his father to give him the green light to go get his children. So I want to encourage you as believers today. Hang in there. Look at what's going on around you. Use that as a tool for your mind to give you peace of, peace of mind and give your heart the assurance and the hope that we have. This book's real. Everything that he said would happen in the past is happening. It's already happened. Everything he said would happen in the perilous times would come, they're here. And I believe everything that this book speaks about that's going to happen in my future and your future is going to happen. It's always been true and it always will be true. I'm not here to debate the Bible. I'm just here to share with you. If you believe it, to God be the glory. If you don't reject it, that's your prerogative. Amen. You got to try, you got the right to do that. I'm not going to argue that point with you, but I'm sharing you what does say the word of God and what he put in my heart and what I believe. There's a reckoning day coming for those that will continue to be spiritually blind by Satan in this world. I hate that with a passion, but if you don't know who Jesus is, when the, when, when the life leaves your body, when you breathe your last breath, when your heart beats for the last time, if you don't know Jesus, your name's not in the book, hell's going to be your final destination. And if you're walking around on this earth and the rapture takes place, then you're going to be left behind to go through the seven years of tribulation. And I got news for you, friend. If you think it's hard to serve the Lord today, wait, the tribulation period starts. You know, a lot of people think we're living in the tribulation now. Maybe they, they believe in pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib, and all that. 
That's irrelevant to me. All I'm going to do is keep my nose to the grinding wheel, look at the signs around me, listen for the trumpet to sound at any moment, amen, and keep doing what God's called me to do. And use everything that the devil throws out there, whether it be on social media, on the news, in the world today, everything he throws out in the world, the, Satan, the, the God of this world has so many people blinded, I'm going to use that as a tool. I'm going to use that as a tool to draw strength from knowing that this blessed book that I stand upon is real. It's powerful. And it is infallible. Amen. It was inspired by God, written down by men. I believe every bit of it from front to back. Genesis to Revelation and everything in between. This kind of blindness will cost you more than you should be willing to pay. This kind, this spiritual blindness will cost a person more than you should be willing to pay or give up. It'll cost you your soul most of all. This blindness is an everlasting darkness that sometimes it seems like even God himself can't penetrate it, even though we know God can do all things. But if you shut him out, if people continue to shut him out, you know, we've, we've, we've ran him out of the school system. Now we got guards and fences around the school system today. You know, we ran him out of the government. Look how corrupt the government is today. We've even, they've even some churches that don't welcome the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob the, of this Bible into their church services today. And you might as well just shut the door. Amen. Right? Ike bog over the door and close the door because it's no, no more than a social club. If you're not preaching the true word of God, if you're not standing on the promises of this book of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the one that created the heaven and the earth, the one that created the world, the one that created you and I. If you don't believe, the one that sent his only begotten son, the one that raised him from the dead, going to send him back to rapture the church away. If you don't believe in that God, you believe in the wrong God. You're preaching the wrong gospel. You're serving the wrong master. You're blinded to the fact. That's why we accept all these different sins in the world today. The church is cooled off. Our standards have been dropped. We don't stand by the word of God anymore. Let me tell you, you can't make your, the Bible fit your way of living. You got to make your way of living fit God's word, fit the Bible. That's the only way to make heaven your home. So you can tear the pages out of it. You can burn it. You can try to drown it. You can do whatever you want to do with it. But it will not ever lose. It will never ever lose its power. It is all powerful, all knowing. Bible said that it says this word is sharper than any two-edged sword. It cuts asunder even to the marrow of the bone, to the very intent of our heart and our mind. It knows everything about us. Exposed. And let me tell you something in closing. Naked we came into this world, naked we're gonna leave. The only thing you leave them here with is your soul and your spirit. And it's gonna spend eternity in one of two places. It's either heaven or hell. The choice is ours. Stop being blinded by the God of this world, which is Satan, and come out from among the world and be ye separate and let the light of Jesus shine into that dark place in your heart and open your eyes that you can make heaven your home when you leave this earth. Amen. Love you and appreciate you. I want you to leave your comments below, leave your praise reports below, leave your uh, prayer requests below. And let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you for another opportunity to share your word. I thank you, Lord, for those that have watched this video and be inspired to uh, continue to, to let the light shine in their life and then to go out and share it with the world. I pray that a sinner watch this that's lost and undone. Maybe somebody's in a deep, dark place in their life. I pray wherever they are in sin, I pray that they would listen to this. It's nothing, that, it's nothing about me. It's all about you. I'm just a voice piece. I'm just a messenger boy. To bring the word of God. I may plant, somebody else may water, but God is you that gives the increase. So Father, I pray that we use this platform for your glory and your honor. And that your word would not go out void and not come back void. But it would do its job and hit its mark. It would save those that are lost. It would heal those that are sick and afflicted in their body. And it would draw them nigh that are already saved and give us a closer walk with thee. And Father, I'll be careful to praise you and thank you for all you've done. All you're doing. And all you're going to do in Jesus name. And everybody that believed with me said together, amen. Love and appreciate you. And until next time, remember, Jesus Christ loves you. And Jesus Christ is the answer for any and everything we're dealing with in life. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day. I love you all. Bye-bye.